Aloha, I'm Thomas Mobat, owner and engineer here at Iliki Music Productions in Hilo, Hawaii. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about how to use reverb in your mix down techniques and a little bit of the history about reverbs, where they came from and where they are now. Um, it's quite an interesting history. I'm sure you've all heard about reverbs. We've used them every day in our mixing and uh, uh, recording processes. Uh, they're also used in live sound as well to give a uh, a bigger sound to your vocal microphones. Microphones in general don't have any kind of a uh, big sound. They're very dry and close. Uh, reverbers are going to add a nice third dimension to your sound. And when I when I say that, what I mean is when you're when you're mixing, you have uh, two different dimensions between your speakers. Uh, I'm assuming you just have two speakers. Uh, you've got a left and a right, and that's basically your two dimensions. You can mix to the left to the right, or you can put things right in the middle or somewhere in between, but basically you're stuck between those two speakers. Uh, there's no third dimension to it. If you want to add a third dimension to your mix, as I'm sure we all do, uh, you can reach for a reverb, and that's going to give you a depth. Uh, by applying reverb, the more reverb you give it, it's going to give that depth and that third dimension. It's going to let the music sound like it's back further away from the microphone. Uh, you can achieve that also by physically moving back from a microphone, but usually in recording studios and live situations on stage, that's really not too much of an option. Uh, you have to stay up on the microphone, uh, unless you're singing in some beautiful place like a cathedral or a church or a concert hall, where some distance from that microphone is gonna sound good uh, and you can hear the room. Uh, most of us are stuck in smaller uh, places like vocal booths or uh, recording at home or even at a small pub, a stage in a club, you have to pretty much stay on the microphone all the time. Uh, so what reverb is going to do is allow you to give some depth uh, from that microphone without you actually physically having to move away from the microphone. When I speak out loud, um, the sound of my voice is traveling through air directly into this microphone I have here. Uh, just out of frame, you can't see it, but it's right up here. and that sound is coming straight from my mouth, straight into the microphone. Uh, I also have one pinned here. This is called a lavalier microphone. That's right on my chest. So the sound is coming right out of my mouth, straight into that microphone. Um, also, you're hearing a little bit of the sounds of the room around me. Those are reflections. You're hearing the sound of my voice reflecting off the walls, the surfaces in my, even on my computer screen here. My, it's reflecting off that. Any surface, it's bouncing like, a, like an echo and into the microphone. So you're hearing those re reflections or echoes, very short echoes, but they are echoes of the room uh, into that microphone as well. And the combination of all those signals, those reflections and my voice going straight into the microphone are making up the tone of this recording. Um, that's what a reflection is. Uh, obviously in a bigger room, like a, a hall or a concert venue, you're gonna hear uh, longer reflections. It's going to take longer for my voice to get to one of those walls or surfaces and then bounce back through air back into the microphone. So if I was in a larger place, like a church perhaps, uh, you're going to hear more of that uh, nice reverb sound, which is just a, a series of small reflections all equaling one large church sound. Uh, obviously, if you went into a larger place like a cathedral or maybe a hockey rink or an empty warehouse, uh, an empty uh, gymnasium, uh, you're going to have big long reflections which give it that huge reverb sound, um, which sometimes sounds good. So choosing the type of reverb you want is, is a very subjective. Uh, it depends on what kind of room you want your voice to sound like. We're very lucky today. Um, we used to have to collect uh, rack uh, gear like this over here uh, to uh, have reverbs available uh, to us. We would um, uh, send from the mixing board, we would send a signal to one of these reverbs and then it would return to the mixing board where you would mix it in with your, your dry signal uh, from your microphone and create the reverb sound that you wanted. Um, they're big, they're clunky, and they take up space in a rack like this. They use a lot of electricity. Uh, you can only use one of them at once. You can't have several different reverbs uh, coming from any one of these devices. You had to collect more than one, usually two or three or four or more different reverbs. Uh, and the more you collected, the more different types of reverb you had. 
uh, when you're actually in there, you can turn the knob to create different sounds of reverbs. You could select a concert hall or a church, a small acoustic room, whatever you wanted. But whatever you dialed in, that was the one you got. Uh, you, with plugins now, you can own the plugin and have as many different reverbs as you want on as many different channels. So it really opens up your possibilities there. Um, they also uh, are much quieter. Uh, the, the amount of time that uh, the signal would come from the mixing board through a cable, a physical cable, into the back of the reverb unit and then go back out once it was processed back through a couple more cables and stereo back to the mixing board where it would be blended in. Uh, that time and distance that it traveled uh, also allowed noise uh, and a little bit of um, interference sometimes to come into that signal. So they were typically kind of noisy, kind of hissy. You had to always watch out for that when you were mixing. Uh, that If you had your outputs from your reverb cranked up too hot, you might get a hiss and that would uh, that wouldn't be something you wanted to have in your recording. And if you didn't have enough output from your reverb, uh, it would not sound loud enough. So you would uh, you'd get a lot of noise that way as well. Uh, the, the thing to do would be to get as hot a signal to your reverb as possible and then just really carefully monitor the returns coming to your mixing board. Uh, and sometimes I would even run those uh, returns through a, a stereo equalizer on my mixing board where I could EQ the reverb return. Um, I could add EQ, add brightness, or if something was noisy, I could back that off too. I could back off hiss or noisy. Uh, so it was a really nice way to be able to uh, process the, uh, the sound of that reverb even further once it came out back out of the box. Um, these days we've really evolved. We're much more fortunate now that we live in a, a land in a time where um, you can purchase reverbs as plugins, and that is the thing of the present. Um, it's a great thing uh, that you can, uh, usually for about the price or less than the price of one of these uh, effects, which could, ex could could get very expensive. I mean, they, they could run you from a few hundred bucks all the way up to a few thousand bucks, depending on uh, the type of reverb, the quality of reverb that you got. They tended to get really expensive. Some of the top end stuff from Lexicon or the Rolls Royce of reverbs is called a Briscotti uh, reverb. Those were I think about $4,000 for one reverb unit, one strip like that. They sounded great, but four grand, uh, that's more than I can usually afford for, a, for an effect. Um, with these days with plugins, you can collect plugins from as little as 30 bucks, 20 or 30 bucks on sale uh, from companies like Waves, uh, all the way up to a, a few hundred bucks from a company like Universal Audio, uh, higher quality stuff. Um, but Definitely prices that wouldn't break the bank. You could, you could have a nice collection of plugins, uh, and there's plenty of them out there to choose from. Uh, you can search around and find just the ones you want, uh, purchase them, and drop them in your uh, drop them into your computer, and then pull them up on your mix downs as many different tracks of it as you wanted. You weren't stuck with just one like you were with the uh, the rack mount stuff. You could have on on ten different tracks. You could have the same reverb. Uh, 10 different uh, instantiations of it, uh, uh, and each of them could be different. You could have a hall on one, a church, an echo, uh, chorus, uh, something like that, uh, using the same plug-in, but just having different versions of it across your different tracks. I'm going to go through 10 reverbs that I keep parked on my uh, DAW, and I, I have easy access to anytime I want to pull up a reverb. I've got about 10 of them here that um, I'm going to show you if you stick around, I'm going to show you my top five favorite reverbs, uh, where you can get them, how much they cost, and how great they sound on my mixes. Okay, here's an overview of my uh, mixing board, my mixer, uh, starting down here with my drums. This is my template that I've built uh, over a long, long time to come up with a, a good template to start off when you first open up a session. Uh, it's something we're going to do in another lesson is talk about templates, but this is my template. and. Uh, I've got it built, so I've got right up here uh, in this section is where they have the uh, reverb sends. It's a little bit of confusion about uh, that. Uh, what's the difference between uh, these sections up here where you can drop a reverb or an effect as opposed to these guys down here, which are more old school, like we used to have on mixing boards. Uh, these are effect sends. Uh, if you drag a reverb plug-in or any kind of plug-in uh, into one of your slots here, it's going to 
uh, put that or apply that reverb or that effect just on that one track, which is fine. You can do that if you just want to have a special uh, type of effect, say, on your vocal, and you're not going to use that anywhere else. You can certainly do that. You can have several different reverbs or effects on uh, a track. As you see, I've got about five or six different slots here for effects. Uh, you can change that number up to 10. I mean, whatever you need, you can, you can adjust that depending on your needs. I, I find that four or five is usually plenty. Uh, for a, you know, a compression, an EQ, a reverb or something. Um, if you need more than that, that's fine, but I find four or five is plenty. Um, what I like to do though, because every time you drop that reverb onto your channel, you're taking a little bit of your uh, computer's RAM or your computer's memory and processing to, uh, to do that. And eventually you'll start uh, running out of memory to process those reverbs. That is, if you dropped a reverb on every single track, you're probably going to start running out or pushing your memory pretty quickly. Um, especially longer, bigger reverbs, uh, they take up a lot more memory uh, and they're going to be intensive on your computer. So one way to save room and to make things a little bit more fluid is to set up some effect sends like I have here. Uh, as you can see, I've got what is it, four or five different effect sends. There's one, two, three, four, and five. And each of them uh, has a little... Uh, send knob right here, a little volume knob that uh, sends a signal from that track uh, to your plugin. This is a little bit more like we used to do back in the day with the mixing board and a rack of equipment like this. And I'll try to, I'll try to be clear about this. I've got several that are well, my favorites that I routinely reach for already preloaded uh, into uh, these slots here. So I don't have to, I save a lot of time by not having to select those every time. Uh, that's the first thing you do is decide what channel you want to apply your reverb on and then what type of uh, reverb or verb you're going to use. Uh, and if you've already got some select, you don't have to even do that. You can just say, I, I always like using this Seventh Heaven uh, reverb. Uh, I'm going to leave that parked across all my tracks. That way when I want a good reverb, I just uh, unmute it and then I'm, I'm already sending to that reverb. I keep my reverbs sort of like I did back in the day on my mixing board, I keep my effects returns all the way down here at the other side of the board. Um, right here I've got about 10, looks like nine or 10 different reverbs uh, right here. These are all stereo uh, effects returns. That is, these are not actually audio channels. These are uh, the returns for that reverb coming back into the mixing board. You can also adjust the level on them if they're coming back and you want less reverb, you can also adjust that here. Um, I'm typically, typically going to do that over at the uh, send level. Uh, you can adjust, uh, obviously, how much reverb you want by turning that knob right there. And uh, there's the middle point where that little dot is, and you can crank it up all the way if you want 100%. But usually um, somewhere around there, and you're, you know, 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock is about the level that I want to send my reverb uh, from. That's how you control how much reverb is getting onto your track. So if you can imagine it going down, all the way down to the, this section down here, where my reverbs are, going through the reverb, and then returning through the track in stereo, probably stereo, it could be mono, but usually stereo, and then that's added to your mix in addition to the dry signal. So you've got a dry signal on your track, and then a reverb return blending in with that in the mix process, uh, that's where you get your blend of uh, dry and wet signal. One thing I'll also do in my template is like, uh, I've, I've decided what these reverbs are, these 10, uh, nine or 10 reverbs here. I already know what they, what I'm gonna want them to be most of the time, but if you just leave them open on your computer, uh, they're gonna take up RAM before you even started using them. That is that when I'm tracking, uh, I don't like to have a lot of reverbs going. I might have one or two going, but I don't need to have 10 different reverb plugins open. They just take up RAM. They slow down the recording process. You've got to change your buffer size sometimes. You don't need to have 10 different reverbs open and ready to go, really until you start mixing. That's around the time you're going to start doing that. So what I've done though, and avoid, to avoid uh, having to reselect those every time is you can choose the reverbs that you want in this slot and then save them as a preset up above. For example, on this one right here, I have a preset that I know is gonna be my H-verb. That's a, one of my reverbs that I always like. And by selecting that preset, 
it opens up the reverb that I like to use automatically on that channel. And then you can click it, it opens up and it's ready to go. Uh, otherwise I would have to uh, go through there. Let me just delete that one. Otherwise I would have to go through there into my effects chooser. I might have dozens or even hundreds of different effects to choose from. Uh, go to my reverb section. Where is that? Right down here. Go through all my different reverbs of what I wanted to use. Find the H verb. There it is. Stereo H verb. Click on that. Open that up. And that takes a few steps to do that. Then I would have to decide what reverb type I want. I could go through a pretty long list of reverbs to try to find like just a basic large hall that I like to use. Um, as you can see, that takes several steps to get it to that point where it's ready to use. Uh, what I'd recommend is finding a reverb that you like, like the H verb here from Waves and choosing effect that you like a lot, it's something useful and handy like a large hall or a chamber that you like and use all the time. Find the one you want and then load it up like you did and then you can save that here. You can go under this and save that as a, a preset. Right at the top it says save insert settings. Just save those insert settings like that and then next time you open up a session your reverbs are blank, but it's, it's, so it's basically one click to open up that reverb that you like. Boom, there it is. Then all you've got to do is double click on it. It's open. It's set to the type of reverb you want. Uh, even the, uh, the reverb times, all the little EQs and everything you can save into it. Just like you had it, you can spend some time getting it like you want it and then save that as a preset right there. So when you open up a brand new session, you don't have all your different reverbs taken up RAM there. You're, they're ready to go, they're quick to select, uh, and you know, usually you're not going to be using 10 different reverbs. This way, if you were just using one of them, you could say, I just need that one there. I don't need the H verb today, I want to use my R verb. Boom, there it is. And that's, you know, you don't have to have them all open and going all the time. You can just choose the ones you want. So, looking back over here, back to my reverb sends, the way I've set it up, is that I've got my favorite four or five slots right here. I've already selected the reverb send that I'm going to use. Uh, I've taken the time to go and mute all of these so that there's no reverb being sent uh, to the uh, plugin. Uh, it's ready to go. I've got the send ready. It's actually even turned up already, so I don't have to even turn it up. All I've got to do once I've selected the reverb that I want to use down in my effects return section all I've got to do is click and unmute. It's a little teeny button, but boom, I'm sending signal straight to my reverb right away. And then I can fine tune it with a little knob like that. I've selected the reverbs that I want. I've already got them loaded on. These are blank slots right here next to it, but you can see on all of these, I've taken the time in my template to select uh, uh, the, the same reverb across Send one, two, three, four. I've got my favorite three reverbs right there on all channels, ready to go. All I've got to do is assign it, unmute it, and I'm sending those channels, those tracks, right away to that reverb. And I can just fine tune it right there. Pretty quick, a quick way to get going. Then I've got my second favorite, my H verb right here. Below that, my R verb. Then I've got a blank channel right there for that fourth one. I typically use that for a special effect like a delay or a flange or something. I'll leave those slots blank so I can quickly, quickly choose a new effect on one of those channels if I like. And then on the bottom, I've got a stereo send. It's a little bit different than these mono sends, which send a mono signal and then that reverb returns in stereo. This one at the bottom is a little bit different. It's a stereo reverb. It's a stereo send. You can see there's two different knobs, one on the left and one on the right. If you've got a stereo instrument uh, and you want to send two different signals to your stereo reverb, you can do that here with your left send and balance on the right. Typically, I'll use that on drums. So I've got a nice stereo drum chamber parked down here on this section right here. Five and six, I'm using a stereo drum chamber. One I like to use a lot is the Ocean Way Studios from Universal Audio. 
That's a nice stereo drum room that I use all the time. You can, it's very deep what you can do with this. This is a great sounding drum room. They've sampled the old Oceanway Studios in California, in Los Angeles, California. I don't have any big rooms in my studio. I've got a small vocal booth and a small drum booth, but by applying this reverb, I can get my little drum booth to sound just as big and natural as that beautiful studio, that vintage studio in Los Angeles, California. They made a lot of hit records out of there in that Oceanway Studios. I can instantly get a sound like that drum room in my mixes without owning that big piece of California real estate. One of my favorites, that guy right there. It's incredible what you can do. And they give you their Studio A, they give you a Studio B, which is a different shape. You can adjust the microphones that you choose, three different stereo pairs, how far they are from the mic, the spread. It's incredible what you can get with that plugin right there. So that's a little bit about Ocean Way Studios. Let me turn that off on. That's one of my big favorites right there. It's like booking a session uh, in Ocean Way Studios uh, and, and going in and adding that reverb, uh, that nice sounding room or those rooms. Uh, it's like, a, like booking an afternoon all the way in uh, California. It's just a great old studio. I'll try to put some more pictures up. I think I've got some history on it as well. We'll go into a little bit later. Um, well, that's about it, guys. I appreciate your listening. And um, if you can give me a like, I sure would appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. If you like the content, press the subscribe button, and I'll let you know when I've got a new video for you to check out. Uh, share it with your friends. Tell your, your other engineers about me. And I'll try to keep on making content that uh, uh, gives you information that nobody else has given you. All right. Aloha from Hawaii. Shoots.